We're discussing the subject of wisdom and how wisdom can be added to your life, how that one can actually pray for wisdom and God will give wisdom to you, James 1 verse 5. We also looked at how wisdom can be imparted to you through things like schooling, which is going through a regimented schooling or learning uh, process, how wisdom can be imparted to you through being mentored, where you've got somebody that's older, let the older women, for example, teach the younger, where older men instruct younger men. And also how Moses prayed for Joshua in Deuteronomy, uh, chapter number uh, 39 in verse 4, and wisdom was imparted into the life of Joshua. And so we're looking at, at wisdom principles. Proverbs chapter number 8, verse 33 says, Hear instruction and be wise. And do not refuse instruction. Blessed is the man that hears instruction or hears wisdom, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my posts and my doors. Verse 35 of Proverbs chapter 8 says, For whosoever finds me, that's wisdom, finds life. Whosoever finds wisdom shall obtain favor from the Lord. But if a person sins against me, which is wisdom, and wrongs me, he will do his very soul harm, and that individual loves death. And so when we're looking at wisdom principles, it actually starts with instruction. And there are many, many codes and many, many processes through which we can access wisdom principles. And so we're going to look at a few as we have in the previous lessons. So for today, uh, wisdom principle number one. Wisdom does not complain. Wisdom compliments and wisdom confronts. Uh, anytime we have uh, a very difficult situation in our lives or we are confronted with very adverse conditions, the easy thing to do is to complain. But wisdom confronts that situation, seeking the solutions, and wisdom complements because it's easy to complain and it takes a concerted effort to compliment. So wisdom principle number one again, wisdom does not complain, wisdom confronts, and wisdom complements. Wisdom principle number two, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom, in other words, is a person who carries principles or a person of principles. A principled person is a person who is groomed in wisdom. And so anytime you find somebody who is principled, who adheres to certain uh, structures and adheres to certain values, that individual is aspiring to high levels of wisdom. Because when the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing, it's not just referring to wisdom being on the top of the chain of values, on the top of the chain of virtues, or on the top of the chain uh, of, of academic ability or attainment in information or knowledge, but he also talks about wisdom in, in line with character, wisdom is for principled people. And so wisdom key or wisdom principle number two is that you must be a principled person, then wisdom will sit on your life. Wisdom principle number three. Wisdom is not in denial, but wisdom sees the writing on the wall. Wisdom is not in denial, but wisdom sees the writing on the wall. Because a lot of times people don't deal with reality. The difficult thing about change is that a person has to change. And, and another thing about change is that it's difficult for a person to change or to change their mind is because you have to use your mind to change your mind. But what wisdom does, wisdom is not in denial. Wisdom doesn't deny the facts. Wisdom doesn't make like something does not exist. What wisdom does... Wisdom sees the writing on the wall and then begins to pursue the change that's necessary. So wisdom principle number three, wisdom is not in denial, but wisdom sees the writing on the wall. Wisdom principle number four, wisdom is to respect and honor God and wisdom is to respect and honor a life source. That's like a mother or father or a spiritual leader in our case. So wisdom then, is where we have respect and profound honor for God. Wisdom seeks to honor a life source. When the Bible says you must honor your mother and father uh, because that guarantees long life, wisdom guarantees long life. 
But the reason uh, a person who honors mother and father has long life guaranteed is because they exercise wisdom or they release wisdom in honoring a life source. God has placed within the confines of a life source uh, protection because anytime God allows life to come through someone, whether it's life in terms of a physical, creating another physical human being, or whether it's life through an idea that advances the human family, if we honor and respect a life source, then we are showing and exercising wisdom. So wisdom principle number four is that wisdom is to respect and honor God, and wisdom is to respect and honor a life source. Wisdom principle number five. Wisdom is to seek the laws that govern life and to master those laws. Wisdom is to seek the laws that govern life and to master those laws. The entire universe is made up of laws, both laws that uh, are in the world of physics, in the world of chemistry, in the world of biology, etc., etc., but also in, in, in spiritual laws. And so when we, when we seek these laws, because many times between you and your breakthrough or between you and your next level of experience uh, in life, is a law that protects that next level. But when you seek that law that governs that particular uh, level and you master that law, then you have access to everything that that law has been protecting. So wisdom principle number five, wisdom is to seek the laws that govern life and to master those laws. Wisdom principle number six, wisdom is to recognize that if something isn't working, it's possible that a hidden law is protecting the entry into a new level. That's similar to wisdom principle number five. Well, let me read it again. Wisdom is to recognize that if something isn't working, that it is possible a hidden law is protecting entry into the new level. And so when you're dealing with, with levels, because life is lived on levels, experienced in stages, and is established on dimensions. Life is lived on levels, experienced in stages, and is established on dimensions. So let me use music as an example. In music, you have uh, the scale. So if you're playing in the key of C, you have seven notes that go from uh, note one to note seven. So it sounds something like this, and I'm not a singer, but it goes, la, 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 la. That's the seventh note. La, eighth note is the number of new beginnings. So what you have when you go to the number of new beginnings you then enter another level or an octave. But to get to the next level or octave, you have to go through seven stages. When you get to the eighth stage, it's actually number one again. So life is lived on levels and is experienced in stages, established on dimensions. So any time you come to a place where there's a blockage, it's possible that there is, you recognize that there is a law that's, that's holding you back. Or, or protecting that next level. Wisdom principle number six again is to recognize that if something isn't working, it's possible that a hidden law is protecting entry into that. And finally, for this one here, wisdom principle number seven. Wisdom is to know that the past cannot be changed, but that the future can be manufactured. Wisdom principle number seven. Wisdom is to know that the past cannot be changed, but that the future can be manufactured. There's very little you can do about the past. We have to learn from that, of course, but as we learn from the past, we now have to manufacture our future, and that's based on the way we visualize things, the way we image, the way we speak, uh, the way we come into relationship with those that have greater experience, the way we access resources, the way we utilize those resources, and so, yes, the past is in the past. We can't change that. But if there's a giant facing you whose name is Goliath, you can use that to manufacture your future. If there is a Jezebel that's on your back chasing you, you can use that to manufacture your future. And so for, for every person that is looking to go to another level and a place in God, wisdom is the principal thing. I'm going to pray that God will give you wisdom that God will expand wisdom in your life. I pray, Father, for every person listening to this lesson, I pray that you'll give them great and profound wisdom because you've instructed that if any man asks wisdom, you'll give to all men liberally. 
we bless you for giving us wisdom. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and enrich you. I'm Bishop Tudor Bismarck from Harare, Zimbabwe, pastor of New Life Covenant Church.